CCC family, it's Dawn Marie with Custom Comfy Crochet, and today we're going to learn how to make these really nifty candle holders here, these crochet candle holders. Um, they're pretty easy to make. Um, we are going to do a little bit of uh, different with our stitches here, and we're going to be using a CD as the base. So we're going to be using a lot of repurposed stuff in here, lots of fun, pretty easy to do. And then in the end, you have such a beautiful project that you can sell, that you can give as gifts um, or to friends or whatever you want to do, or just use them in your own home all around because they're great fun. I'm using them for all my fall candles. As you can see, I've got one that's still liquefied here. So let's take that out very carefully. And then I'm going to show you what it looks like on the inside. So you can see on the inside, that's where the disc is on the bottom. And then you crochet up from that. And then I use some jute twine to go around just to give it a really cool fall look. And then I made a jute rose. Now this is gonna be on a separate video on how to do this, but I'm gonna make it right after this one. So it'll be available when I put this video up and I'll link it in the description box below. So if you can, please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Hit the notify me bell below so you can get notified about all my videos and please share um, my video if you like it. That helps so much to your crochet groups, to Instagram, Facebook, your friends, family. That helps a whole bunch and I really appreciate it. So let's get into our materials today. So of course, like I said, I'm using some old, you can use CDs, DVDs, whatever you want to use. This is just an old one that I had laying around. So I'm going to use this one. Then you're going to need, um, you could do it all in one color. You can use any colors you wish. You do not have to put this around it, but I'm gonna show you how to make it exactly like mine. So just keep that in mind. So I'm using two different colors of yarn. I've got this pretty sandal wood colored yarn, and then I've got this white yarn. I believe that this is um, Lion Brand that I got from Walmart, and this is a Dollar General just white, um, I'm sorry, Dollar Tree white yarn. Um, and then for most of the project, I'm using a 4.25 millimeter hook, but I am also gonna use another hook to pull the yarn up, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. I'm just using a 3.5 for that, but it's only for pulling the yarn through the disc. There's nothing else you need for that but that. And then the jute that I have is this right here. I got this off Amazon. I'm using it for some other projects that I'm doing now as well. And um, so yeah, I'll, I'll link a description in the description box below. I'll put a link on how you can find this on Amazon. It's not real expensive. Um, you could probably find it at Michael's as well or any other hobby shop. You could find some of this and you could get a lot smaller roll for a lot less as well, probably. Um, and yeah, and then you're gonna need a darning needle or a crochet needle looks just like this and you're going to need a pair of scissors. You might want to use a stitch marker. I'm not really sure if you're going to need that or not, but just in case, just have that on handy, or you can use a piece of yarn if you wish, okay? So let's get into the tutorial. Okay, so to get started, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my white color, and I'm going to make a slip knot. And I'm going to hold up my CD here. I can grab it. <laughs> and then I'm going to hold it on the back side of the disc. So I've got it held right here. Okay, I'm gonna put my hook through it. And then this is hanging here. So then I'm going to grab this, I'm gonna use my nail. I'm gonna grab this through the middle and I'm gonna pull up just like this. So then I'm gonna catch here, and then I'm gonna pull with this in the back. So make it take a couple times, just follow exactly what I'm showing you to do, and you'll get it just fine. Then you're gonna go through this first loop right here, and then you're gonna go through both loops. And then you're gonna repeat that again. You're gonna push this through the middle, pull up, catch on your hook with it, go through your first loop, and then go through both loops. And what I like to do um, is I, once you get a lot on here, it gets a little bit harder to pull through. So I'll use that small crochet hook to pull through the middle. So again, pulling through, going through that first one, and then going through both loops. Then you can push it over if you need to. And 
and then you can pull like that. And then go through your first and then bow through two. Okay. Now the reason why we're not using this hook to go down and pull up is because when you do that, it loosens this. Ah, the light's catching it. Let me turn that away. Um, it loosens uh, this too much. So like if I put this through here and then I go to try to catch it, it'll pull up and you see that'll be real loose now. So to keep that tight, you wanna keep this pulled down and then go through and pick up and pull through like that. And then you can go through one and then go through both. Now I know a lot of people are going to want um, probably a number as to how many times you're gonna go around this disc, but really I can't do that. You're just going to keep doing as many as you can to cover the disc. Um, it totally depends on how you crochet, if you're really tight, if you're really loose, if you are putting these close together. So I can't really give you an actual number, but you're just gonna keep going around until you cover the disc. And as we get closer to the end, I'll come back and show you, of course, how to finish this part of the project and what it should look like. Um, but once you get to the end, you're just going to slip stitch to that first one that you did. So just keep going around like this. And just to show you real quick, if I was going to use my little other little one, I would just pull up like that, make it a little easier. Just like that. And like I said, that'll be more needed as you go around and this, this little circle gets closed and more it gets harder to pull through, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and keep going around wrapping my disc and then I'll meet you back in just a few minutes. Okay, so we finished um, wrapping our uh, CD disc here. And so now I'm going to slip stitch into my first stitch right here. And then I'm going to chain two. That counts as my first half double crochet. And what we wanna do is we want to do multiples of six around this right here, okay? So as close as you can get. So let's just do this together. We're gonna go into our next stitch and put a half double crochet. So that's two and into the next half double crochet and into the next. Okay, so counting our chain of two, that's one, two, three, four, five, and six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay, and so since we're doing this in multiples of six, we want to get to 54 and we're at 50. So I'm just going to do two in each of my next stitches. Do three. and then I'll do one here for 54. It doesn't have to be perfect, but the stitch count needs to be perfect. It doesn't really matter if you put a couple here or skip one, whatever you need to do. <clears throat> and then you're going to slip stitch into our first chain of two here, just like that, okay? And then what we're gonna do is we're going to chain three 
And then we're going to go into our next space. That counts as our first double crochet. And we're gonna go into our next space and put a double crochet. And then into the next space and put a double crochet. And then we're going to chain three, skip three, and then put three more double crochets. One, two, and three. And then again, you're going to chain three, skip three, and then put three double crochets. Then you're going to chain three, skip three, and do three double crochets. So just keep doing that all the way around until you get back to the beginning and then you're gonna slip stitch to your top of your chain of three, but I'll meet you back again and we'll finish it together. So I'll see you in just a second. Okay, so I just finished our last three double crochets here. As you can see, this is turning in and that's normal. As we start going up, it's going to start going up more. So all of this is gonna be kind of caved in and that's fine. So then you're going to chain three skip your last three and then go into the top of this first uh, chain of three that you did and do a slip stitch, okay? And now what we're going to do is we're actually going to cut off and we're going to bring in another color. Now, as I said, if you don't wanna work in these ends and you don't wanna do this, you could just keep going with the same color. But what I'm going to do now is is we're going to be doing kind of like that checkered pattern, but it's actually gonna make ridges going up. So you're gonna to go to right here is where we ended. So we're gonna go right here um, under this first chain of three are three double crochets. So you're going to put your color right into this first double crochet of below. You're gonna pull in this brown that matches your jute twine. And you're just going to Pull that tight in the back and you're going to chain three and that counts as your first double crochet. Then you're going to go into the next stitch and put a double crochet into the next stitch and put a double crochet. And now you're going to chain three over this set of double crochets and then working again below this chain you're going to work on the top of those double crochets. So again, you're going to do three double crochets. And then you will chain three again. You will skip three. Then you will go into your next, under your next chain of three and do your double crochets. So you're just gonna keep doing this all the way around, just like you did the last one. And when you get over here, we're gonna slip stitch, but I'll meet you back in just a minute to finish it up. So now we're at the end here and we're going to chain three. And then we'll skip our last three stitches here. And then we're going to slip stitch into the top of our chain of three right here. And then we're going to cut off again, and then we're gonna come back with the white. So just pull through, bring your white back in, and just like we did before, right here's where we just tied in our yarn, so this is where we finished. So right under this chain of three, right here, we're going to bring in our white yarn. And we're going to, again, chain three. One, two, and three. And then we're going to do another double crochet in our next stitch, another double crochet in the next, and then you're going to chain three over these double crochets, and then work double crochets over this chain of three, right over here into the bottom. One, two, 
and three. So that's what you're gonna do for this. You're just gonna keep doing that round and round until the, you get the height that you need for your candle holder. But I do wanna tell you that if you're gonna make it exactly like mine, you're going to want one, two, three, four, five, six rows of the um, changing pattern here, okay? So you're gonna want six of those and then that should be the height that you need. And then we're gonna go around and do um, a, a row of half double crochets. But if you go any higher with this candle holder and you make the same rows that I'm making, what happens is as it gets taller, this is a heavy jute twine and so it will pull down on it. So I found that this is the perfect size for these size candles right here. Um, this is like a mainstays candle that you get at Walmart, um, but any other place that sells these size candles, this is absolutely perfect for that size. It fits right in there and comes up just like that, okay? So that's exactly how I made mine. So what I'm gonna do is, is I'm going to keep going around till I get the height that I need, like I said, and then I'll meet back up again and I'll show you how to put this um, how to finish it off and how to put the jute twine around and then as I said there'll be a separate video on how to make the rows so I'll see you back in just a minute okay guys so we're right here at the end of uh, this row right here this is our last row and I think I miscounted so basically what you want to do to make this easy is you're gonna have four rows of your white one two three four and then you're gonna have three rows of the brown one two three Okay, so that's how you're gonna know. And then you're gonna slip stitch again to the first, uh, to your chain of three, just like that. And then you're going to chain two, and you're going to do half double crochets all the way around. So, you're going to put three half double crochets right here in the middle where your chain space is. And then you're gonna put three half double crochets on the top of your double crochets. Okay, and then when you get back around to the end here after you do your last three half double crochets into this chain space, you're going to slip stitch to your first chain of two, just like that. And then you're going to cut off And then you've got all these that need to be worked around here, but we're going to flip it inside out like this. And all of your ends that you have worked in or tied off, however you wanna do it, are now going to be on the inside, except you might have a few that are out. I am going to just tie these off because I'm not selling this. I'm using it for my personal, um, my home here. But if I was going to sell this or give it to anyone, then I would definitely want to make sure that I worked in all my ends. But I know this is just going to sit in one place, so tying it off is fine for me. Okay, so just make whatever decision that you want. And I'm going to show you how to put this jute around here, this jute twine ribbon. So I'm going to take a, I'm not going to cut it off yet. I'm just going to cut it in half. Um, I'm gonna make sure that my end is even. Just like that. And then I'm going to simply fold it in half. And I'm going to go in and out of all my spaces here, right underneath. 
just like this. And I'll just keep folding it in half. Now I don't wanna make this tight, I wanna make it really loose. So it almost looks like that it's poking out a little bit. I think it looks really good that way. So I'm just gonna pull it through so I can go ahead and have a lot to work with. And then I'm just gonna make sure it's folded and it might be sticking out a little bit. Again, I want this to look real rustic. So then I'm gonna go right here. And again, I'm just weaving in and out with this. And then right here, when I come up to the end, I've got this little piece right here. So I'm just gonna make sure that this is loosened. These are very loose and poking out a little bit. And then I'm going to cut this off. I'm gonna poke this back through the ends here. And then what I'll do is, is I'll cut the ends right there, and then I will overlap them, and then I will hot glue them right here together so it looks really good right here from the top, okay? So all of these ends would be worked in or tied off, and then that would be hot glued. You can also use fabric glue, or you can also crochet it to here. You don't have to use, um, you don't have to use hot glue, it's totally up to you, but I use the hot glue. And this is the place right here where this piece is, that's where I'm going to put my rows, okay? Because every other place has been, uh, has got the jute ribbon going through, so that's exactly where I'm going to put my rows. And that is going to be my next video, okay? So once that's hot glued, then that'll be fine, and then you will hot glue the rows right there, and then it'll look just like this. How cool. Like I said, turns out quite lovely, pretty easy to make, um, and the materials are not very expensive. And then as you can see, um, once this is all in place, this fits uh, just fine in here. And this will also fit a, um, a Bath and Body Works candle as well, because this yarn is real stretchy. Um, and it will work perfect for that as well. Okay, so you can adjust the size of this if you want. In the beginning when we were doing the disc, if you want it for a smaller candle, you could find a smaller wooden piece to work around. You could drill a hole in the middle. There's just so many wonderful things you can do with this. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Keep a lookout for this uh, jute twine rose coming up, and um, I'll see you guys again soon. If you have any questions, comments, you need any help, uh, you want to show me pictures of your finished candle holders, you can find me on Instagram, you can find me on TikTok, um, you can find me on Facebook, you can Gmail me, I have a Gmail below, email me, um, and of course you can also comment on YouTube. So I'll see you soon guys, happy crocheting, bye-bye.